no one really waiting for you except there's loads of people waiting for you because there's polish private citizens who with their own cars are driving to the border picking people up and going the extra mile sorting them out with accommodation so it's not really buses i'm calling this the like the 21st century dunkirk because it's little armies of small private citizens driving in their cars to ferry people back to cities like warsaw uh, and krakow as well and then of course it's private citizens putting them up in their homes and that's for exactly that reason that you won't really see any camps for these 1.8 million people because they're all in people's homes and i dare to say people's hearts this is the story of how i found a bunch of total strangers in my flat here in warsaw in poland i got a call from my friend he said can you can you house these people there's about nine or ten of them and I said I could take two or three maybe and an hour later they're at my door I'd sorted out a hotel and paid in cash giving them cash out of my own money and I suddenly had three strangers in my house there was a grandma uh, known in Ukrainian as Babushka her grandson Vlad and their cousin Ludmila they didn't speak a word of my language I didn't speak a word of their language but somehow with a little bit of phone translate we became friends and we've stayed in touch with them. And I'd even consider them my own personal Ukrainian family. Their family was on the street, literally not knowing where to go. This was the start of the invasion. And by pure chance, a chance conversation in Malaga in Spain and a message sent to me got their family off the cold streets and into a warm home uh, with soft towels and a warm shower after a 30 hour journey from the hell of war into the safety of Poland. So. Um, again, a story which for me brings chills. I just think about it now and I'm, I'm so overwhelmed and moved by the sacrifice of the people of Ukraine and the welcome of the people of Poland. So I live in a flat in central Warsaw and my wife had gone away to the border. She works at the British Embassy, so she was on a rapid deployment team. And I thought it's going to be OK. I've got my parents in law. I'll be all right. But then they came down with COVID. So uh, I was looking after my children while simultaneously trying to do my work when my friend got this Ukrainian family into into my flat it's a pretty small flat but they had their own spare room and they had um, showers we gave them some food and Babushka the grandma played a really smart move she gave my two daughters who were three and five bars of chocolate and I gotta tell you that was a power move if I'm being completely honest with my wife at the border for a week it was really helpful to have some extra hands Babushka grandma um, knew her way around the kitchen but probably better than I did and she ended up making us this delicious huge Ukrainian soup and this this meal and I was kind of overfed by the end of it and my daughter wandered in and said daddy I think I'm falling in love with Babushka <laughs> we just connected in this really really deep level and there was um, a really profound moment when I was asking about Babushka's son and um, Vlad, her grandson's uh, father and mother, and it turns out that they're paramedics and they decided to stay in Ukraine. They're currently in Ukraine. I'm still in contact with them. They reached out to me and they'd made the terrible decision to send their son away with Babushka to get to safety. And as they're explaining this to me, I just put into my phone and got it translated that Babushka, now you have another.